Hey guys, recently Banggood sent me this Android powered double den car deck to review. In this video, I'll show you the process I went through to install it. It's not going to be a thorough video on how to install it, but a general overview of what I did. So having Android means that you have access to tons of applications on the Play Store and Android works great for smartphones and tablets and just as good uh, as an operating system for your car's entertainment system. So this particular model has a seven inch LCD with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, as well as 16 gigabytes of uh, flash storage and one gigabyte of RAM. This is generally enough for most applications like GPS, uh, video and music players. Seven inches is probably the largest you can go for a double DIN. There are larger displays, but that means that they'll kind of stick out of the bezel and not sit flush or they'll kind of either retract into the unit itself. Uh, even though this version doesn't have cellular capabilities, hotspotting to your mobile phone can give you network access on the go if Wi-Fi isn't available. The latest models are much lower profile. They're almost like a tablet now and not bulky like the previous version. The kit will generally come with all the wires that you need to install it to your car, but you will need to buy a, another wiring harness to adapt it to your car. You may also need an antenna adapter if your antenna uh, uses like a square plug instead of the standard round plug. So before installing it to your car, the best thing to do is to test it out and make sure that it works. And here is how I wired it up. Here I have it on my kitchen table and these are the connections that I use to power it with a 12 volt uh, DC power supply that plugs into the outlet. So here you'll see I connected the ground together as well as ACC and the battery terminal to positive and it powers up. I'm able to use it as if it was plugged into the car but in this case I'm just powering it with a wall outlet that uh, outputs 12 volts and uh, that's more than enough to power this unit. With it all hooked up, I can use it as if it was in the car itself. And this is the stock interface that uh, is installed. Of course, you can install your favorite launcher on Android and change the look of it. I think the hardest part of this type of install is actually taking the dash apart. It differs from car to car, so hit up YouTube to figure out how you take apart your, your dash for your particular car. If it's too hard, maybe ask a friend or maybe you'll have to pay some professional to install it. Installing it into your car isn't as hard as you might think. To make it easier, get a wiring harness for your car. You can usually find these on Amazon for about $15. With this harness, you can solder it to the Android unit's included ISO harness. And just match up the colors of the wires and you're set. The wires used are pretty standard, so it's nothing too complicated. Then it's a simple hookup without uh, damaging your car's stock wiring. To facilitate joining the two harnesses, I use I use these uh, self-soldering butt splices. They provide the same connection of a so solder joint without using a soldering iron, and you could just use a lighter to join them together. So this is the outcome of soldering the included wiring harness to an adapter that plugs into your car. And after that, it's just a matter of uh, hooking it up to your car without doing any damage to the stock harness. In the future, if you ever plan to remove it or install another one, you just have to unplug it and that's it. So it doesn't do any damage to your stock wiring at all. With the other end connected to your car, you just have to plug this end into the unit itself. Now it's time to test it out. So just turn the ignition over to accessory and it should start powering up and showing you the logo. And the Buddha process, I think it takes about like 30 seconds. So it's not too, not too long, but it's not fast like the stock one, but you got to think of it like this. It's almost like booting up a phone or a tablet. So it's going to be a little bit longer, So here it is installed. As you can see, there's a little bit of a gap in the uh, bezel here, and I will need to buy um, a bezel to hide the gap, but uh, I'll do that later. It's a bit harder to see the screen here because uh, there's like a lot of light shining on it. So that is one of the negatives of this screen. Like most of these uh, tablets in sunlight or daylight, it's harder to see. 
And uh, this is the stock interface, so you have access to the radio and uh, Bluetooth and just a few options. So it's very simple and uh, it should be because, you know, it's it's while you're driving and it, you don't want the interface to be too cluttered. And here, this is where you would pair up your phones and, and devices uh, if you want to make calls or uh, send music to the device. And here's the radio. The radio works really well, but unfortunately, it seems to only have FM there is no AM so if that is a big deal for you then uh, this unit would definitely not work for you uh, here are the apps that are installed already there's a couple of apps I installed uh, manually on uh, from the Play Store I installed MX player Psygic and PowerAmp and Psygic of course is the offline uh, map GPS software so let's just go through some of the settings here. If you go to car settings, this is where you can make changes to the head unit itself in terms of like the um, the logo, the boot up logo, or um, various other things. So here, Android settings is um, where you would change, uh, where you would connect to Wi-Fi. Uh, your standard Android settings would be here. So uh, you're probably used to that. To change the boot up logo, go to logo settings. And this is where you can assign a, a certain logo for your car as it boots up. Pretty much every manufacturer is here. And if it isn't, you can also uh, install your own. But uh, these are the ones that are in the um, flash storage right now. And as you can see, it has a lot of different car manufacturers already. So choose the one that is appropriate for your car. So the prices of these Android decks have dropped significantly over the last few years. I think overall their quality has dipped a little bit because uh, the unit that I had before, it worked a lot better than this. Uh, it was just better built and the screen was easier to see when there was uh, like a lot of daylight or sunlight shining on it. And this one, it was kind of harder to see. Uh, and it also it was missing AM. But overall, if you're looking to upgrade your stock deck, which usually has only like AM, FM, and maybe CD and MP3 capabilities, these Android decks do give you Wi-Fi and they give you GPS and they let you run pretty much any Android application you want. So in a way, these can be beneficial, especially when you are coming from a, a lesser uh, head unit that comes with your car. Um, that's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video.